Good day, everyone. We are totally snowed in here in Quebec. I'll show you my backyard in a few minutes. Welcome back to Bromberg News. March is the toughest month here in Quebec. We always get lots of snow, which means lots of shoveling. The roads are closed. And for the birds, well, it's the end of the winter, so there isn't much natural food left out in the wild, or it's really hard to access with all the snow around. So the bird feeders are always very popular. That's why it's really important to keep your bird feeders filled at this time of the year. Inspect them to make sure that snow and ice is not building up on them, preventing birds from feeding properly. So this is what I'm doing after another snowstorm. I'm shoveling my way in to my bird feeding station, refilling the feeders, checking them out. The other day I saw 26 goldfinches trying to feed at my bird feeding station. shovel under the bird feeders as well so it's easier for the birds to feed on the ground. We're continuing to talk about bird food. This time we have a question from the owner of the Wild Bird Store in Alberta. Here's what Chris Brownship writes. I have been following a feed on Facebook about suet and the ingredients they are using. Can you shed some information? They are using lard. Is it good or bad? They are adding sugar to the mixture. Is refined sugar good for seed eating birds? Some are using molasses or honey, good or bad? I am always curious about this as I make my own suet that we sell in the store. We use beef kidney suet, mix it with peanut butter, rolled oats, whole wheat flour, cornmeal, and grubs. Thanks for your opinion. Hi, Chris. Interesting questions and very few concrete answers, if only because few of these foods we give to wild birds have ever been tested. The pet bird trade probably knows more about diet quality for birds than anyone, but one has to keep in mind that we are feeding wild birds and not captive ones. Wild birds are free to be choosy and thus subsist on all sorts of foods, both natural and artificial. Whatever nutrients they're deriving from our feeder food is backed up by the nutrients they get from their natural foods. Let's talk about the refined sugar we offer to hummingbirds, for instance. It's merely an energy source for them, but to get their protein, they also eat a lot of insects, especially spiders and they also get nectar naturally from various flowers. And a lot of folks do not know that at least 52 species of birds other than hummers also visit our sugar feeders, including seed eaters. I'd be very surprised if those visits for sugar water amounted to much in their diets. Just like with humans, it's all about moderation. Everyone knows that eating too much refined sugar can be bad for us, but lots of healthy folks still eat it. I'm certainly not giving up my cakes and pies and chocolate bars, for instance. As for lard and suet, it's okay to use it in suet as long as it doesn't go rancid. Regarding honey and molasses, most folks recommend against using it in bird food, mainly because even the best quality brands can harbor bacteria or become moldy quickly. 
and I can't argue against that potential risk. There are lots of different opinions out there on wild bird food quality, but until controlled scientific studies are done to look at the long-term implications of the various foods, much of it is just that, opinions. Would you believe it if I told you that humans and birds share the same type of genes? It's called a glutamate receptor that is responsible for one's intelligence. Apparently, birds that are better at foraging are much more intelligent. This is a perfect example of the survival of the fittest. While well, researchers caught bullfinches and black-faced grassquits in Barbados, bullfinches are very active and curious, whereas grassquits are very timid and shy. Then researchers presented these birds with a puzzle where they had to solve it to get to their food. Well, bullfinches had no issue solving it, whereas grass quids were completely stumped and had no idea what to do with that. Then researchers took a closer look at the genes of these birds, and it turns out that bullfinches have much higher levels of that glutamate receptors than the grass quids. Now scientists think that bullfinches will be a lot better at adapting and surviving any kind of climate change. National Geographic has just published the top 10 places to visit to see birds. Let's check them out. We'll start in Nagaland, India. In October, this stopover holds the world's largest concentration of raptors. Now let's move over to Kruger National Park in South Africa. This is where you will find the secretary bird. Hula Valley in Israel hosts over a billion birds that pass through this territory on their fall migration. Mindo, Ecuador is where you will see over a hundred different species of hummingbird. Kakum National Park in Ghana has nine different hornbills. New Guinea Highlands is where you can find all sorts of birds of paradise. Broome in Western Australia is the shorebird capital of the world. In Pantanal, Brazil, in July and August, you can find three-foot hyacinth macaws and hulking jabiru storks. When you visit South Georgia Island, you will probably see half a million king penguins. And then, if you can't travel internationally, there is always Cape Bay, New Jersey, where millions of songbirds travel through on their spring and fall migration. Well, I'm printing this list out and I'm putting it on my fridge for my bucket list. Apparently, Canada has always been big on growing canary seed, a rather hairy looking seed that's mostly fed to cage birds. And even though this seed is full of incredible oils and proteins, it's always been impossible to harvest it in a safe way for humans until scientists came up with the hairless variety. And just recently, Health Canada approved this type of seed for human consumption. Canada, of course, will continue growing it. So if you're looking for a healthy, gluten-free cereal, canary seed might be just for you. Hawks and eagles are such majestic birds, and I don't think they're that easy to photograph, so this was quite a treat. Thank you, everyone. Now let's check out the top five in staff picks. And the winner is Terry Krebs. Congratulations, Terry. Now let's check out the top five in public voting. And the winner is Claire Gardner. Congratulations, Claire. We've noticed that recently a lot of people have been buying weather guards for their Squirrel Buster Pluses. I guess the weather is really yucky everywhere. So this is what we'll be giving out on the next photo contest, a Squirrel Buster Plus with the weather guard. Next month's theme is chickadees. Well, farewell for now. Please don't forget to ID your birds that you submit to our photo contest and try to enjoy the rest of March. Goodbye, everyone.